Hello everyone and welcome to the internet's favorite show about fake rant or waifus, The Waifu Report. Yeah, and you got the sound right this time. This is going to be a look at the new summer event coming in Fake Grand Order North America as of 2018. Now this is... How to put it politely? I, I think the nicest way I could put it is fucking awesome! The more accurate way to put it is that this is a whole bevy of waifus and... Oh, baby. Yeah. I, I just... The servants alone are impressive, and then the CEs that are coming with this are... They're nice. So let's just go to jump right into this one. This is, in terms of waifus, this is the time of year where Fake Grand Order spoils us with just great options. Not just because they're very pretty, but because they're good. Like, not just a little good. They're, they made... Saber, not any of the other sabers, the actual saber, the face to the saber. Good. As an archer. Just just gonna roll with that one. These are all amazing beauties who are very, very good. Even the not so good ones are good. And by that I mean Castor Marie, because eh, she just doesn't fit a niche that we kind of really need right now. And even then, her an animations are awesome. She's really freaking cute. And it's just Marie on a beach because I, I fully admit I have a bit of a soft spot for her after the France chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of these leading ladies, and they are all leading ladies in this case, is amazing. So let's just start off with the easiest ones to get. None of them. As odd as it might sound, one of the best waifus you can get easily isn't a servant. It's one of the CE, specifically a three-star CE for Bodica. Oh my god, she has Shining Goddess, Shining Goddess, however you want to say it. I'm not sure which one they're going to officially leave as a translation. That is the three-star. Three-star. You are getting this in the friend poll. And just sheer art-wise, oh my god. They are just giving a gift right there to all the free-to-play players because this is very nice art. And oddly enough, uh, literally the same amount of clothes she wears in her usual costume. Uh, yeah, just to point that out there, but it's quite nice. I would love if they had done in a future rendition a servant version of her in this costume. They haven't yet, but the CE makes up for it. After that, we have the Analante in a swimsuit version. Again, wish it was a servant, but damn if that is nice because just... We see so many variations of her, both her altar and her regular versions, and they all have a similar look. This one, though, it's just her relaxing, and that's weird for her. And I just love seeing it because it's cute. And I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of the CEs coming out of this event, but I'm a huge fan of their art. Like, this is the kind of thing you put on, like, posters and hang up behind you, and then whenever your parents come over, you hide, and it's like, ah... Uh, Hi, Mom! <laughs> and it's completely worth it. On that note, Pirate's Party. Just, just Francis Drake. You don't even need to know what the art looks like to know exactly what I mean. It's Francis Drake. And it's better than I would have expected. And it's awesome and just... Again, I don't care about the effects. I'm not really a fan of any of the effects on the CEs. But damn, does the art earn a spot on this list because it's just good. And then we get into the really interesting part of this event. The servants. And... Ooh. Now, this is in no particular order, but let's just go with the easiest one to get. Sort of the easiest one to get. The Free Servant Skahawk. Again, not sure if I'm saying the name right. At this point, I don't care. It's Skahawk in a swimsuit. She could be the shittiest servant in the world, and I think she would still be a chase servant. Because it's Skahawk. Hog in a swimsuit. Also, her noble phantasm is literally her kicking Gable into an enemy and just its AoE and... The sheer level of badassery present, along with being real and damn pretty. It just... Yeah. I know she's not as good as her regular counterpart. I know she's not as good as... Shootin. And I'm honestly not a big fan of Shootin because she creeps me out. But it doesn't matter because it's a hawk in a swimsuit. I can only say this so many times. I think you get the drift. She's good because of waifu. 
very waifu. Giant piles of waifu. And by that I mean she's pretty. Not really a fan of the skills, but at this point, I don't care. I want her for the same reason I want the CEs. The art is amazing. Seriously, they, they just... Whoever did the art on this had to have been paid well. I really hope they were, because it was good. Now we'll get into one I already mentioned. Marie Antoinette Caster. Again, it's Marie in a swimsuit. I just... Smiling Marie is always good. And I love that they give her better art this time around. Because before, it, it just seemed very generic with her four-star variant coming out of the earlier chapters, because she was one of the early servants. Eh... But these ones are definitely more interesting. I love that they actually gave her unique animations with a volleyball, and it's just fun to use her. And again, eh, servant. It's one of those, she's not bad. There's no bad servants out of summer. It's just, there's other people who do it better, and her niche isn't really necessary. So it's one of those, you don't need to stack up on more servants doing a similar area. She's just good to have. And it's Marie in a swimsuit, and it's just cute. And again, I know I mentioned it already, and I'm going to say it again probably a few times. I have a soft spot for Marie because she's just Marie. Yeah. How do you not like her? Vive la France! I feel bad doing that, but I'm probably still going to do that again at a later point, And I will feel just as bad about it then, too. Up next, Altria Pendragon, or Squirtoria, as she's ironically and kind of embarrassingly been called. The first saber face to actually be good. Well, specifically the saber face that's an Altria face, not like Nero good because Nero Bride's awesome, but she's just a five-star non-alter because like her alter version was good off the bat, but this is a very good with an amazing NP that looks as good as it hits and just, yeah, this is just, also, just pointing this out quickly, in the animation for this event, there is a quick thing of Mordred and Artoria having a splash fight. Just, just think about that for a second. In canon FGO, because of that animation, Mordred and Saber are getting along at the beach, having a splash fight, and nobody died. That's a thing. Moving on. Martha Ruler. <sighs> Jojo meme. If you don't know what I mean... Just, just go pick up any video of Dio with a truck dropping a, maybe a concrete mixer on someone. You'll, you'll see the resemblance really quickly. I'm honestly surprised they haven't given her a voiceover from one of the Dio characters trying to pretend to be a woman. And let's be honest, it would not be the weirdest thing to happen. Martha Ruler is an odd character because she fits into an odd category of being a very pummel-heavy servant, but she's a ruler, so it doesn't really help her because she's more a defensive base. Because rulers are a very defensive class. It's kind of like a really offensive shielder. It can happen, and they have good star draw, but it's just... Really? Really? There's other classes that are better for that. She's not bad. She's very good. And like I mentioned, Dio reference. Cool-looking NP. And she's a four-star, so it's probably easier to get her than all the others. And unlike Shiro Makusa, when you get him, or should I say when you get her, you don't feel an internal piece of you just kind of die because you were happy to get him. Next up, we have Mordred Ryder. What I love about this one is not just that she's an awesome swimsuit servant. She is, and you should never doubt that because she is awesome. But this is a much more relaxed Mordred with a slightly altered backstory. Kind of like how Lancer Saber and Saber Saber are divergent characters. Ryder Mordred and regular Mordred are also divergent. This one is a little more chill. And because of that, she's actually a little cuter. And I, I, I might... um. I might be a Mordred fan, so this is... It's just nice. I know there's a lot more to it, and you can go to a lot further extents on the lore of what this implies. And there are other characters who have much greater lore associated with their swimsuit variant, which is not what I was expecting, but very cool. But just the sheer fact that this Mordred is smiling. And not like that sarcastic, toothy, I'm gonna murder you and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Smile. That, honestly, is also awesome. This one is more of an honest, just happy smile, and that's just cool to see. Again, I'm not Mordred fanboying. I am super Mordred fanboying here. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, next up we have the one that a lot of people really like, and while she's a good servant, it still freaks me out a bit, Kiyohime Lancer. Not gonna lie, uh, her character, I think the correct term for it is, scares the living hell out of me. It's that super yandere thing. Some people like it. 
I run away screaming. Personal opinion. But I won't lie that some of her character art, the different variations on her ascensions, they're all good. And even her opening art with that open kimono style dress and the swimsuit all mixed together with the lance. It's just, uh, this is one of those uh, different variations where you might want to stay at the first ascension because of just how cool it looks. Kind of like Jack, where you never change her art on ascension. Ever. You don't do that. No. Now, Kihimi Lancer is a very strong Lancer. She's basically a slightly, I can't believe this, stronger version of Skahawk Lancer. But she's good, and she's a four-star, so she's easier to get, and she has high hits on a buster, and she's good. And she's really pretty. Also, four-star, easier to get. Just, just keep that in mind. That is a huge asset. On top of the fact that she has a giant pair of moving on, and Bonnie and Mary Reed Archer. Now, this is actually really cool because unlike their usual variant, this one is Anne taking the lead as opposed to Mary. So instead of having a lolly bunny girl, you have Anne in a swimsuit. Yeah, they're a good character, but let's be honest. You want them for the obvious reason of being awesome. The Yuri Pirates are back and... I wouldn't care if they were absolute shit servants. This is one of those servants you, you just kind of want to get a copy of. <laughs> For um, reasons. Very, very dignified and in no way creepy reasons, but you should probably do it. J just make sure to roll a copy of them. Yeah, just, just say it might be worthwhile. And finally, we have the ball buster herself, Tamamo no Me Lancer. If you don't know what that ball buster reference is, just, just watch her NP. And if you're a male... Yeah, I'll give you a second to just pull yourself together. It, it was hard watching that the first time. I'm not going to lie. That was terrifying. Like, they're admittedly saying that she has, oh, I'm going to kick you in the nuts. And then she does it multiple times. I mean, there's NPs that are, like, you know, really bloody or really disturbing or Kiara eating people through her stomach. Yeah. And then there's... Tamama no Me Lancer, where she literally goes up to male servants and kicks them in the nuts. And the Lightworks made sure to keep everyone roughly the same height so that it would connect. Does it count as a noble phantasm? As well speaking as a guy? Yes! Yes, it does. And it will hurt. Hell, I'm almost afraid to use it because just the sympathy pay. Unless it's against Tristan, in which case... If you haven't complete Camelot yet, I would honestly recommend rolling for this character simply so you can kick Tristan in the nuts. And if you don't know why, just take my word for it. Also, she's one of the characters that isn't the same variation of her regular Tamamo. Just like Berserker Cat, she's actually a variation from the extra universe where she's one of the Tamamo Nine. Specifically, Tamamo May is the original, and then there's nine variations. I could be wrong, and the original could be one of those. I'm not actually entirely sure because I haven't bothered to look it up because that would contain spoilers for extra. This is a very light spoiler version. Essentially, though, she is an offshoot of one of the tales of Tamama no Mei as a nine-tailed fox variant, or technically jackal, but you know what I mean. And she is her own sentient being that actually holds a bit of a grudge to the original, like Berserker Cat would if she was sane. Ish. Berserker's weird version of her. Also apparently a very good cook. Yeah, that, that, that's apparently canon. But Tamamo Lancer is just good. And she's pretty and the fan art of her. But yeah, I would honestly recommend getting a copy of her because like all the servants in this event, she's good. She's really good. She fills a great niche. She's just strong. And even when she slights getting outclassed as the power creep in the game just continues to go, she still holds her own for years. Not just with interludes, but as she is at base. That alone makes her a great choice of a servant. And the fact that she's a Tamamo, not just a face, because she's an actual variant of Tamamo, so she's her own character altogether. It's, just go for her. If you don't get her, you don't get her. But if you do, yeah. This is a good servant that you're going to be glad to have. And... Have I mentioned she's really pretty? 
So all the same, everyone, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I would like to do a quick shout out to all my Patreons. Seriously, you guys are the reason this stuff can happen, and thank you so much for doing it. If you're really interested in joining in, just click the link, and I'll be happy to see you guys in. Also, quick thing, uh, this is a brand new announcement. I'm starting to get in the recordings for the Epic Loot series. I will be putting them first up on Patreon as they come in, and only putting them up on YouTube when the first season is fully complete and fully released on Patreon. So if you want to see them as they come out, join the Patreon. And if you don't, they will be out as soon as the season is actually done. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that out there. And for everyone watching, thanks. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.